This is chapter number four, food security in India. Food security in India, Khadya Suraksha, Hindustan mein. We are taking question and answer on this. The first one is, how is food security ensured in India? So food security means if a person or any person or a citizen of the country he is not having adequate access to the food or he is not able to eat food that is he is not provided or he is not getting it then he, he is food insecure as a country or as a, a government it is required that everyone should be food secure this is food security so food security of a nation is ensured if all the citizens have enough nutritious food available all persons have the capacity to buy food of acceptable quality and there is no barrier on access to food. So I will uh, give you three words for this. First is availability. That is the food should be available enough to feed everyone. Then accessibility. Accessibility means the food should be available at nearby, that is the ration shop or wherever the person is living. He may be living far off or in some remote areas. Food should be accessible to him. And third is affordability. This affordability means he should have that much amount in his pocket and the food should be available in that subsidized rate so everyone could buy it. Which are the people who are more prone to food insecurity? So those people who are having less money or who are not able to earn much or because of some you know climatic conditions or calamity, those people are food insecure more mainly. So although a large section of people suffer from food and nutrition insecurity in India, the worst affected groups are landless and land poor households. Those who are not having land, and those who are working in the say agriculture area but they are not getting proper income or job uh, all through the year in the rural areas and the people employed in ill-paid occupations that is the less paid work and casual laborers that is they may get job sometime they may not get the job sometime they are engaged in seasonal activities only in few seasons they get a proper job otherwise they don't get it in the urban areas which states are more food insecure in india so those states which are susceptible to various calamities or natural things like uh, you know the bad and sukha the drought and flood and those who are samajik bahishkrit that is in the you know social panorama they are not getting enough uh, you can say exposure, that is the SCST OBCs, and those who don't have uh, enough uh, sources of income, those are more food insecure, and those people who live in these states, these states are more food insecure. So the states of Uttar Pradesh, eastern and southern eastern parts, Bihar, Jharkhand, Odisha, West Bengal, Chhattisgarh, and parts of Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, this account for the largest number of food insecure people in the country. Do you believe that green revolution has made India self-sufficient in food grains? How? Now what is this green revolution? Harit Kranti. What happened? In the 1960s there was a real problem. Food scarcity. And because of the NSSO survey result and NFS survey result, the government uh, actually you know, did a lot to improve the availability of food grains. So by the 1970s, HYV seeds, that is high yielding variety seeds, lot of instruments and equipments like tractors, etc. And good irrigation facility, this was provided and the subsidized or subsidy was given to the farmers and that has given rise to green revolution. So after independence, India adopted a new strategy in agriculture, the policies which government took which resulted in the green revolution, especially in the production of wheat and rice. Indira Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India, officially recorded the impressive strides of this green revolution because it, it was a real success. 
in agriculture by releasing a special stamp and it was entitled Wheat Revolution in July 1968. The success of wheat was later replicated in rice. So what happened with wheat that is it was you know one of the key thing in the green revolution this happened with rice. The increase in food grains was uh, very uh, not very much uh, in all the states but those states which produce they produce heavily. The highest rate of growth was achieved in Punjab and Haryana uh, which where the food grain production jumped from 7.23 millions in 1964 to 65 to all time high of 30.33 30 and then to 70 point something you know you can say, say uh, 70 plus crore ton that is this million tons and this was the highest recorded up till now. A section of people in India are still without food explained. So the section of people who are insecure during certain months when they are unemployed, they remain unemployed because of the seasonal nature of the agriculture work. They are engaged in seasonal activities. They are paid very low wages that just ensures bare survival. They are just surviving the minimum level of living they are not achieving so at times it so happens they have to stay without food they are they are not able to even you know manage two time food for their kids and kids and themselves what happens to the supply of food when there is a disaster or a calamity now whenever say this is a place and a flood comes now even you if you are a nirdhan or you are below, below poverty line or you are poor and a person who is living lavishly, he is having money, this flood doesn't care. It affects everyone. So the poorest section of the society might be food insecure most of the times while persons above the poverty line might also be food insecure as you see here when the country faces a natural disaster or calamity like earthquake, drought, flood, tsunami, widespread failure of the crops causing famine. Differentiate between the seasonal hunger and the chronic hunger. So seasonal hunger, let me just give an example. He is a farmer. Now when the crop are being you know prepared or sown, he will be called, he will have work. Then when the crop are to be harvested, he will be called. But in between when the crop are growing by itself, that is around four to five months, nobody will call him. He will be jobless. He will have no em employment. So the seasonal hunger is like this. For some time they don't get proper food. Chronic hunger means a person is getting some work. He is feeding himself and the family, the family person. But he, the family persons, they are just eating say chapatis and onion or salt. They are not getting proper food. They are not getting proper, proper uh, balanced diet, nutrition. So they are kuposhit. They are malnutrition. That is the... Kids may require the say milk because they want calcium. The wife because of her eye is not well, she may require vitamin A but he is not able to provide, they are not getting it. That is called chronic hunger. So the chronic hunger and seasonal hunger, the chronic hunger is a consequence of diets persistently inadequate in terms of quantity and quality as I just suggested you. The seasonal hunger is related to the cycles of food growing and harvesting as you see here. Poor people suffer from chronic hunger here because they are earning less, they have very low income and in turn they, there is an inability because they don't have money to buy food even for survival. So they are buying but they are not eating properly, only basic needs they are fulfilling. This is prevalent in rural areas because of the seasonal nature of agriculture activities as you see here. This one, seasonal hunger. And if you talk about uh, urban areas, see, if you are a casual labor, you are working in say construction, the construction doesn't go for in monsoon. For monsoon season, four to five months, there is no construction. So what happens to him? He will not get money. So That is how he is, um, you know, affected by the seasonal hunger. What has our government done to provide food security to the poor? Describe any two schemes launched by the government. So in order to help the poor the, and to provide food security to them, two special schemes were launched in 2000. But what the government does is, let me tell you uh, what, what they do. First is, they keep the buffer stock. 
and then the buffer stock after this buffer stock is there they it is being sent using the public distribution system to different ration shops where the people get uh, wheat rice uh, kerosene oil and uh, sugar at very subsidized rate 2 or 3 rupees per kg how does it happen fci government has a has an organization fci they take the wheat and uh, rice and other stuff from the from the farmers at msp minimum support price and now they have a buffer stock and now they send it to the pds system pds system is a network where the fci go downs which are having a lot of uh, the weeds and rice and etc they are sent to the public distribution system and this public distribution system finally through the ration shops it is given to the people who actually required it at a subsidized subsidized rate so there are two very important uh, schemes that is the antodaya anna yojana aay and Annapurna scheme APS. The Antodaya Anand Anna Yojana is specially for poorest of the poor. That is, there are poor people, but there are certain people who are very poor, poorest of the poor. And this is Antodaya Anna Yojana is specially targeted to them to feed them. Then Annapurna scheme. See, if a person is uh, above 60 years, right, and he has no one to look after, what will happen to him? So government said, okay, 10 kg free of cost. You come and you take it. This is called indigent senior citizens or Annapurna scheme. So the functioning of these two schemes was linked with the existing network of PDS system, public distribution system. Why is buffer stock created by the government? As I just suggested you, to ensure the availability of food, all sections of the society in India government carefully designed a food security system. And this consists of two things, that is buffer stock and public distribution system. And this is done to distribute whatever they are getting that is the buffer stock with the help of fci the government organization and this is done to distribute the food grains what fci procure from the farmer at msp and it is being sent or distributed food grains uh, by pds to the deficit areas among the poor strata or people of society at a price which is quite lower than the market price write notes on minimum support price buffer stock issue price and fair price shops so as I said, this buffer stock and uh, this comes as just a bhandar or the storage at FCI. Minimum support price is the price being, you know, ghoshit. Uh, they they just uh, uh, you can say the the farmers who are who are trying to crop. Now they are being told by the government, okay, this is the price we are going to give you for these 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 uh, crops. So they the government in advance. They declare the price of the crop and this is called the minimum support price so the, now the farmer is also ready okay i'll be i'll if i uh, grow wheat i'll get this if i grow jowar i'll get this and the issue price is what the price for which the normal poor people get the actual public distribution uh, system uh, wheat rice etc at ration shops the fair price shops are ration shops where the people go they get all this wheat, rice, sugar, and kerosene oil. So minimum support price, the farmers are paid pre-announced price in advance for their crops. This price is called MSP or minimum support price. This MSP is declared by the government every year before the sowing season. This is very important. Before the sowing season to provide incentives to the farmer for raising the production of these crops. Buffer stock is the stock of food grains or a bhandar, namely wheat and rice procured by the government through fci food corporation of india issue price now the buffer stock is with the government through fci is created to distribute food grains in the deficit areas and among the poor strata or the poor people of the society at price lower than the market price and this is known as the issue price so when you go to the ration shop you buy something that is the issue price this also helps to resolve the problem of shortage of food during adverse weather condition or during the periods of calamity Fair price shops, these are ration shops. So the food procured by the FCI is distributed through government regulated ration shops among the poorest section of the society. And this is a part of, or this is the last link of the public distribution system. Ration shops are now present in most villages, localities, towns, cities. There are about, you know, I, I just had 5.5, more than 5.5 to 6 lakh ration shops right now all over the country. So ration shops are also known as fair price shops. 
They keep stock of food, grains, sugar, kerosene oil for cooking. And these items are sold at people at a very lower price, that is, that is the issue price. What are the problems of the functioning of the ration shops? Now, as we saw, ration shops are very good institution or the shops or places where you can go. Or if you are poor, just go buy things at a very lower price. Now, there are certain drawbacks. There are certain problems and malpractices also. First of all, ration cards are issued only to those people who have their proper residential addresses. Now, large number of homeless, poor people who are migrants also fail to get rations from these shops. So they are, you can say, devoid of what they should get. And actual people who are getting it or might not be getting it are the sufferers. So the poverty remains. The food insecurity remains. Then the owners of these uh, shops sell ration, that is the good stuff they, which they get from the FCI in the open market at, at higher prices. And the shopkeeper just uh, keep the, you know, very bad quality stuff with them and they just distribute it. So in order to get profit, they do all the malpractices. Sometimes shopkeeper make bogus entries in the ration card. They also do these things that, okay, because if they don't do this bogus entry, how, how are they going to sell it to the, to the normal market to get uh, faida and, and to get profit? Apart from that, the sh these shopkeepers, they just open the shops, uh, say one day or two day uh, in, in a week. But as per the government rule, the shop should be open all the time, means all the day, maybe one or two day of uh, when the saman is coming or the stuff is coming, that may, that may happen. But most of the time it should be open. But people, they just go, they see ration shop closed and they come back. Write a note on the role of cooperatives in providing food and related items. Now the government is doing a lot for food insecurity uh, resolution, providing the food security. Apart from this, we have the cooperatives. We have the NGOs. They are also helping and adding up to the you know you can say the revolution of this food security providing everyone food security so the cooperatives they are playing an important role in food security in india especially in the southern and western parts of the country the cooperative society set up shops to sell low price goods to poor people for example all the fair price price shop or the ration shop you can say running in tamil nadu around 94 percent are being run by the cooperatives if you talk about amul amul has actually is, is responsible for the white revolution why white revolution because of the because of the milk and milk products so amul is a success story now everywhere you will get a very good quality uh, milk and etc milk products in a very cheap and good price then we have uh, we have mother dairy mother dairy of delhi now you will get uh, milk and milk products and the vegetables at a very very good price and this price is regulated by the Delhi government and this these all are cooperatives. So these were the question and answer of this topic. Thank you so much and take care of yourself.